Hey, what's going on everyone? Welcome, welcome again to another video of uh, virtual reality. And uh, on this video, we are going to be using the Pika 4 with virtual desktop. But guess what? We're going to be testing out the new, uh, still not released, um, plugin that we now have for virtual desktop in order to use OpenXR directly as the API bypassing uh, SteamVR completely. And that's what, we, that's what we're using right now as we speak. So just a couple of things that we have to, or that I have to mention here, so to avoid any kind of confusions out there, and is that as far as virtual desktop and the performance overlay, uh, there is some discrepancies, if I am not mistaken, where the, uh, I'm not sure if it is the game latency or if it is some other stuff. I think it's, I think it looks to be the game latency a metric here that we have on the performance overlay with the uh, with this plugin right now, which is still under beta. Um, it doesn't report the proper game latency. Okay, guys. So here we are. Uh, we are in uh, the simulator, and um, as you can see right now. Uh, it looks like the game is showing a proper latency based on what I'm seeing here. It does show like 12 milliseconds. And, um, but the main thing I want you guys to pay attention to here, it's the frames per second. We are getting a solid 40, 41, 42 frames per second. And I'm going to be honest, I'm going to have to read again over the, uh, developer, uh, messages on this plugin. I uh, guess it looks like now it is showing the, the proper latency. Well, well, I'm not gonna say the proper latency, but it at least is showing some latency on under the game metric. And if this and if this if this is measuring the game latency properly, then this plugin, like completely bypassing uh, Steam VR, it's reducing the latency dramatically. Because normally when I'm using just virtual desktop, uh, talking to the uh, Steam VR API, and then the Steam VR talking to the Fly Simulation API, we end up having like about 29, 30 milliseconds of latency. And right now I'm seeing only this stuff is not even going above like 15 milliseconds of latency, which is an, an incredible uh, difference as far as the game latency is concerned. Yeah, this is incredible, man. It is incredible. How smooth this is feeling here. It's crazy, man. Wow. Yeah, I'm not really sure when they plan to uh, release uh, this uh, plugin slash utility, if you will, whatever you want to call it. But right now it is still under beta. And I guess uh, you might you might be able to get a hold of this uh, plugin if you go straight to the uh, OpenXR Toolkit uh, developer. You might be able to get a hold of this uh, plugin ahead of time and. Of course, uh, any any problems you encounter with it, you, you're gonna wanna uh, communicate that via the Discord channel with the developer, just to make sure that you know everyone benefits from whatever bugs you encounter uh, by having a developer address those bugs, if you will.
All right, guys, we are freaking airborne. Wow, the game feels so freaking smooth, man. You're not you're not going to believe me until you test this out. It feels so smooth. Look at the game latency. I'm not really sure if that's really the proper game latency, man, but if it is, it is incredibly better than what we had before uh, when using Steam VR. The game is silky, silky smooth. No stutters. Jesus Christ. This is freaking incredible, man. So one thing that's uh, worth mentioning here, um, there's one thing you guys need to understand. Like before you jump you know, immediately into the uh, virtual desktop OpenXR plugin. You really need to understand that uh, for this stuff to work, the game that you're going to be playing need to support OpenXR natively, if I am not mistaken. Why? Because uh, right now we are not using Steam VR whatsoever. If you have a VR game that requires the Steam VR API, then it may not work if the game developers have not implemented the OpenXR API. So right now, the games that I know of that support uh, the OpenXR API natively are Microsoft Flight Simulator, Assetto Corsa Competizione, um, uh, DCS also supports OpenXR natively. Which else? Uh... There might be a couple more out there that supports the OpenXR API natively already. But I do know that, um, for example, the, uh, what's, what's the name of this game? I believe uh, Euro Truck Simulator, American Truck Simulator, um, don't support OpenXR natively. So those might be the types of game that you might have problems if you enable the OpenXR um, API natively with virtual desktop, so it bypasses Steam VR completely. So you might have some issues running those games. So just keep that in mind. Always, uh, you know, read the uh, documentation properly so you know what the limitations are of having the OpenXR or a virtual desktop run with the OpenXR runtime natively because uh, you know if the game that you are playing mostly more uh, most of the time doesn't work properly then it's going to be a disappointment for you pretty much in my case that's not a problem because I'm mostly playing uh, Microsoft Flight Simulator and as you can see here it just works uh, beautifully with a virtual desktop OpenXR uh, plugin here. Yeah, so we're getting we're getting a solid 39, 40 uh, frames per second, and the game latency looks beautifully low, uh, 12 millisecond right now.
All right, guys. So, yeah, um, I am very pleased with the results that I'm seeing so far here with the uh, virtual desktop OpenXR. Again, this is not available publicly yet, but it will be pretty soon. Just uh, keep an eye on the uh, virtual desktop um, OpenXR a GitHub repository that I am going to leave in the uh, description of this video. Okay, so anyway, I appreciate you tuning in. Be sure to hit that like, subscribe to the channel if you're new, and I will see you on the next one. Take care.